This is a bit X gamma. And this is a Drew Vosk. I've been making my own mining farm for years and it's getting pretty serious, but I've also been having a lot of fun messing around with these mini Bitcoin miners like this Bitax Gamma that's assembled in the US of A by a veteran owned company. Speaking of mining, I may be building my own mining farm, but if you don't feel like doing that, check out Revolution Mining where you can buy miners with them and they will run them for you. Link out in the video description below. And thanks to them for making today's video possible. What do I mean when I say these little things are open sourced? Okay, so you can go and buy this PCB or basically this circuit board. You can buy these other components like this display. You can buy the ASIC chip, the application specific integrated circuit Bitcoin mining chip, the BM1370, which is installed on all the Bitax gammas, uh, and they're all using the 601 board, as you can see notated here, and start mining Bitcoin over Wi-Fi for just a few watts anywhere. This thing came with a power supply, power cable, and to be honest, we've talked about Bitax and mini Bitcoin mining before. And if you subscribe to the channel, you may have watched some of those other videos, and I've been more elaborate in this setup and things like that before. Today, I wanna to focus a bit more about the manufacturing of these, what makes them different, what makes the different manufacturers different, right? Why do they use different fans? Why is this board white when the other board was green and then the other board was black? What makes these a good value? Should you be mining on a mining pool or should you be solo mining? Those will be the key topics we talk about. Where do you buy one of these? Why? What are the differences? Honing in on this specific model I have in here hand today, a bit from IX Tech, and let's just call it a, a Bitax breakdown. I've had a big focus on efficiency recently. We recently picked up a Tesla Model Y, which I'm very excited about as we not only expand our fleet, but the family. <laughs> I'll leave it at that. Uh, I'm very excited for that. And I just got my residential electricity bill. I'm in Virginia and my electricity rate at my house is 14 cents at my mining farm. It's about seven and a half cents and it could be a bit better if I scaled the farm further. Uh, but my electricity bill here on the house is I run uh, some miners over there to keep my garage nice and warm and stack some additional Dogecoin. Also run some gear in the house and then just simply live in the house. $580. That is a huge electricity bill. We pushed our solar install back a couple weeks because it just keeps raining, but it really doesn't take much to run this, but uh, I will need a bit of juice to charge the car and then also run those other miners in the corner that consume consistently about 2,400 watts of, like, of electricity. To put that into perspective, this little bit ax only consumes about 20 watts or less. When it comes to bit axes, the three recent models are the bit ax ultra, using the BM1366 Bitcoin chip out of the S19XPs. The Bitax Supra, which iXtech makes a very cool Supra white paper edition and they'll be making a Gamma white paper edition in the future. Make sure to check out our Bitax white paper review video if you wanna see more of that, but a very cool art, laser etched, and it's the first page of the Bitcoin white paper, which may sound lame or typical or basic, if you will, for Bitcoiners, but it's my favorite. It has the focus on a peer-to-peer -peer digital currency in one CPU, one vote. And that is what I love about these single chip ASICs. It is one chip, one vote. This is the closest thing to the original mission in the Bitcoin white paper, where you were supposed to turn on one CPU or one computer, right? And then run one piece of the Bitcoin network and be rewarded for it. Remember, all of the Bitcoins that have been released, they've been mined. Mined by computers, GPUs, and then FPGAs and ASIC miners. And this is just a mini ASIC miner. These are taking latest generation Bitcoin mining chips and putting them right here. Let's talk about making a bit axe though. You grab the parts and all of this is open source. They have parts lists. You can grab a bunch of stuff from DigiKey and other places and you get them in uh, and then you solder it up. What do you think of the quality on this? Let me know down in the comments below. I will remind you if you think that this is very cool and you want one of these, that IX Tech is a smaller operation. Uh, so to grab one as soon as possible when they're in stock because they cannot meet demand. They keep coming in and out of stock. 
Uh, there's a lot of demand for bid axes worldwide. There's over 4,000 models being sold a month to my knowledge. Uh, they're working on expanding the global supply chain of these uh, because that's just how much interest there is. Why do I think this is cool? This device allows you to mine Bitcoin anywhere. You can plug it into any outlet. These power supplies are rated for 100 to 240 voltage, right? And their output is five volts. Make sure that you always have five volt DC here coming in. Otherwise you will essentially ruin this. So by changing the power cable, you can plug this into essentially any outlet or even just have it hardwired. And then from there, you use the drum connector and you just connect it. Power supply is connected, so I won't push it in at the moment. Otherwise, I will be losing some skin on my thumb, which almost happened to me the other day when we were checking out the Bidax Super Hex. Ooh, be careful. Oh, oh, f which is that absolute big monster of a unit that hashes over four terahash a second. What made the Gamma so cool is with this chip and the rest of the design of the Bidax, they achieved over one terahash a second for something that fits in the palm of my hand. How can you not want one of these? How can you not like something with a form factor like this? What's interesting uh, that uh, IX Tech did is you'll look at this fan and there's no, there's no screws in it. It's not mounted in a typical manner. This is like a 3D printed piece and, they, and it's tight and they just push the fan into it. And then it has these feet that push into the heat sink here and it just keeps it firmly situated. And it's pretty much the same thing with the little cover they put on the display, uh, but it does have a little clip here that goes around to the backside. These use an all-in-one Wi-Fi module, Expressives. So you'll normally see this pop up on your network, uh, either being labeled Expressive or simply Bidax as a default name. Previously, we've reviewed Bidaxes distributed by Altair, who sells a Bidaxes manufactured by Gecko Science, as well as Power Mining, who make their own Bidaxes in-house, as well as Tiny Chip Hub, who also make their own Bidaxes in-house and then distribute them themselves. I've been really searching to find the best sellers. If you have a recommended Bidax manufacturer that you think we should show here on BossCoin, please drop a comment or shoot me a message or email, let me know, because I want to highlight the best sellers that are making the coolest products, the most unique products, the most efficient products, and also some of the best bang for buck products out there that also have good customer service uh, and just treat their people right. If, if you watch this video and go buy one of these, I want you to have a great experience from the ordering process, e being easy to quickly getting your gear and just expectations being proper. They make these 3D printed enclosures in house. You can buy it without it. It is an upcharge. Even though these IX Tech bit axes look very unique, they actually have some of the better pricing, which is probably contributing to these not staying in stock. So, Let's set it up. We've run through setting these up elaborately before. You plug it in, you connect to it. It's gonna uh, pull up captive Wi-Fi. You can do this on your Apple, your Android. Uh, you can do this on a computer as well. I always just do it right off my iPhone. Uh, the most important thing here, right, is you are just going to save your Wi-Fi configuration. Uh, you have to restart your device after doing this. At the same time, I'm just gonna flip over to settings. I already copied uh, my Bitcoin address. I'll click the three lines and I will click restart. So now you can see that it is connecting to my SSD. Bitx uh, logo screen loads. And now it's pulling up the mining pool information. Oh, you hear that thing fire up. And just like that, you're mining Bitcoin. Let's go. All right, so it's been restarted. Out of the gate, it's hashing around 1,000 gigahash. 1,000 gigahash is simply one terahash. It's consuming about 20 watts at the moment on my watt meter over there. Uh, up to 21 now. I don't like the fans they're using on the IX Tech bit axis. Uh, they're a little loud. I'd love for them to switch to something that is quieter, but maybe that's one of the ways they're keeping their costs down. I'm also a Noctua fanboy, which would kind of conflict with the white and black aesthetic going on here. But hey, I love Noctua fans. This needs to be quiet. It's already small. It doesn't use much electricity. It doesn't make much heat. So then why would we let it become loud? If you want to enable fan control, you need to go into the dashboard and switch off 
automatic fan control. You can see that that noise is because we're at like, what, 63%, right? And this is what 100 sounds like. This is vibrating so seriously that I can feel it in my hand here on the desk. Also for scale, here's an iPhone 16 Pro and the Bidax, including this nice but chunky case is smaller than it. So this is way too loud. I, I like, I don't like this at all. If we go down to 30, right? Danger could cause overheating. At 28%, I can't hear it at all. So where's the happy medium? Maybe 40? 40 is creating a little bit of a hum there. We can see our temperatures at 63 Celsius at the moment, hashing at 1.1 terahash a second. This was easy to set up as you saw. If you watched the Bidax White Paper Supra review video, you may have noticed I ran into a weird issue connecting it to the network. Uh, I didn't have that issue at all uh, with the Bidax Gamma, uh, white one from iX Tech. So I don't think that's some kind of weird issue isolated to them. Uh, and I'll just chalk it up as a one-off uh, problem that I was able to work through and I show in that video. Uh, so it wasn't the biggest deal, but it did. Uh, if it was your first time or you aren't uh, too technical, that could have been frustrating. If you ever need a hand, make sure to head over to uh, VoxCoinTalk.com. It's our community forum. Uh, a bunch of miners on there just having fun, uh, talking about what they're doing, helping others, problem solve, uh, and sharing what works and what doesn't. It's a really good time and good experience. I'm old school, I really enjoy a nice forum over the constant feedback of Discord. There's pros and cons to both. In my experience working with Sean over at IX Tech was good, I reached out to him. Um, I did approach him because I wanted to get the gear into review, I wanted to highlight what he's doing. So I'm thankful for the opportunity to the, review this stuff. Getting it in hand, checking out, it looks good. Uh, and I'm very happy to share an affiliate link and then also share a few other links, uh, discount codes to help you save some coin if you wanna order bid axes or other mini Bitcoin miners and other stuff. Uh, this content on YouTube here is free. If you do enjoy it, if you do like it, please consider supporting us just simply by using our links and ordering stuff that you are already gonna order. And then we get a piece of that. I'm not here to show you this stuff though. I don't care if you go out and buy one. I truly think these bid axes are so cool. And the people that don't like them, honestly really just don't understand uh, what a massive impact these are having for a positive influence on Bitcoin mining, decentralization, and making that network more anti-fragile. Look what happened when I turned this fan down to 40%. We've climbed up to 70 degrees Celsius in here. 25 uh, watts at the wall, right? The hotter this gets, the more power it's gonna pull. And let me just give you an idea. I really need to clean this display. 70 degrees Fahrenheit, ambient temperature in here. So pretty good average, average conditions. I just bumped the fan up to 50. It's definitely a good bit louder and it's getting cooler, right? The temperature's dropping now under 70 Celsius. And you'll also notice the wattage dropping. And that's how important it is to keep your gear cool. You may think, I wanna save power, I'm gonna turn the fans down. But that's not exactly how mining rigs and really many other electronics work. When they become heat soaked, they become inefficient. And basically they start pulling more power to do the same thing. We're still continuing to drop in power. Looks like we might be stabilizing here at around 24 and a half watts. No, it's still going. Still going down and we're still dropping in temperature down to 66 now, 65 Celsius. You can see that with the way this is configured, without adjusting the frequency, without adjusting the core voltage, 40% is just way too slow for this. And now we're dropping under 24 watts. Let's go up to 60. Now we're down to 62 degrees Celsius, 23 something watts over there. And I'll let that continue to cool down. We'll, we'll come back to that. Uh, so yeah, just to round it out, and this isn't supposed to be a long video, uh, the bit axes that are being manufactured by IX Tech seem good to go. Uh, I'd love to see an upgraded fan here used in this model, uh, but it still works. This is definitely louder than I like, and it's louder than some of the other gammas I have. Like the Ice Tower model that we have, as well as the Noctua fan model that we have, uh, run cooler with less noise. Also remember, you can always change these things yourself. You don't like this fan, you can just buy the appropriately sized Noctua fan, which I'll pop up here on screen and link in the video description below if you wanna just do a little upgrade yourself. That's the fun thing is that Bitax has opened the door to tinkering. You can 
mess around with additional cooling. You can add supplemental cooling. You could just put a fan right here that blows onto this, and then you can overclock it further. There's people that are, you know, putting together copper heat sinks. There's people that are liquid cooling these. There's people that are making unique configurations that are just with 3D printed stands that are, you know, pushing more and more and more air onto these and many other things. Uh, so it's, it's very cool. It's very awesome. By solo mining Bitcoin instead of pool mining, I'll go from earning a couple bucks a month to potentially earning over $300,000. If I hit the next Bitcoin block right now, I would earn 304,000 Bitcoin, which is crazy. You get 3.125 Bitcoin plus whatever the transaction fees are. On average, we're seeing about 3.16 BTC per block, resulting in a chance of one in 13,312 per year or a daily chance of one in 4.8 million. That's a daily chance that resets every day. And to be honest, it's only gonna get more difficult moving forward, but Bitcoin is probably also only gonna get more valuable moving forward. Why would I solo mine instead of pool mining? I would rather spend a couple hundred bucks on this, right? This is like a $200 bid X, and use that as my $200 essentially lottery ticket to potentially put over three Bitcoin into my pocket. Also, how incredibly freaking cool would it be to mine a Bitcoin block and know that I was the one that did it? Because if you're on a shared Bitcoin mining pool and you mine, you actually hit the block, but you're just a small piece of the hash rate, you only get a small piece of the, the winnings, right? Because you're working as a collective. That's what a mining pool is. A hundred people are doing the work, putting it together, and you hit blocks more often, and you hit consistent revenue. But you're never gonna get the lion's share unless you're doing the lion's share of work. Forget the lion's share. If you're solo mining, you get it all. Minus any potential fee you have like on a solo mining pool if you're not running your own node and instance. Right, so like right now I'm just using CK Pool to do my solo mining. They're providing that service and they do have an associated fee. Uh, but I am gonna fire my node back up and get a, get a mining pool instance running on it so that I won't have to pay a fee when I hit a block. And honestly, it's just strengthening the network and having fun and, and just kind of just kind of doing my part. I'm 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 doing my part. So it looks like on this unit, the fan speed of at least 50% is where you want to be. At 50%, we've stabilized at about 22 watts of uh, power consumption. We're getting a pretty consistent hash rate of about 1.1 terahash a second. And we are achieving temperatures here under 60 Celsius. The noise again is more than I'd like to hear, but it's okay. Definitely not as loud as a full-size Bitcoin miner, that's for sure. I like this stand too. And what stands out, haha, a pun, accidental, but sick, is it has this cord holder, which is cool. It's these little openings on the back, so you could hang this uh, on the wall if you wanted to. It simply just pulls up, as you see, hanging on the wall, and congratulations, you're a Bitcoin badass. Whoa, Timmy. What are you doing? I'm Vosk. You're on the Vosk on YouTube channel. This is Tails. We run 10 seconds of Tails on every video. She's our super freaking cutie pup. Hope you like the content. Hope you subscribe and stick around. We've got even crazier stuff here in the pipeline. I'm just gonna keep documenting my crazy crypto journey, building my Bitcoin mining farm, and just trying to review every cool, sweet piece of hardware that I can get my grubby hands on. This is the BitX Gamma by IX Tech. White edition, which if you don't know is cool because most of them aren't this color, so it makes it stand out. It's fun. It's like a skin. Who doesn't like skin? That's why skins are a billion dollar industry in gaming alone.